the the press are all colluding together. That's unusual about something that is palpably untrue. And then I started looking at the stats, right? And you can see that 30% of news is now uh, consumed on social media. Mm. When I was, I was at The Sun for a year, I didn't mention that earlier, but like the first one, I was like 21, every conversation was about, oh, how are we going to do better than all the others online? They're all taking our figures and our numbers. Mm. So I know for a fact that every conversation at the Daily Mail, the Guardian, the Sun, all these newspapers will be, how do we stop? social media from stealing all of our customers. That is a fact that they yeah. will be very worried about that. Yeah. So them, along with, their, with Keir Starmer right now, every other day it's about the disinformation on social media. Elon Musk, Tommy Robinson, these are the biggest evil people in the world. Mm. They're the only people with disinformation and they're colluding together. And that is scary because every time before some sort of horrible regime has taken hold, such as in Nazi Germany, mm. that's exactly what happened. The newspapers and the politicians, the people, the newspapers are there to hold the politicians to account. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're all on board with one another. That's a scary time. Have you been following the Tommy Robinson case? A little bit. What, what's, what's the latest? Uh, they're going to hit him with two counts of contempt of court, and he's looking at four years. Shit. For what I can see as being citizen journalism and documentary making. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, I, I, you know, you know, I wanted to interview him, and it's great that you did. Mm. I was trying as a journalist to try and find stuff before because I want to give, you know, have a go sometimes and mm -hmm. go. But this thing you said was racist. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find one single thing. I challenge anybody to. I mean, I, I the view I had of him before versus after meeting him and then doing the research for um for the for the it's an interview documentary that's coming out. He's a centrist progressive. Mm, mm. Pro gay rights. He's got black mates. He's got Jewish. He's a, he's, he's a Zionist. Yeah. He sat in the interview and said, "I'm a Zionist. I believe Jewish people should have a home." I was like, yeah. oh, "Okay." Well, to... He now gets told that he's a shill working for Mossad. Yes, yes. yes. So you can't win. Um, I hope uh, you get a chance to maybe after this uh, you'll get a chance to sit with Tommy because he's he's a he's a great mm. person to interview. Have you been called far right? Oh yeah, every day. Every day. What what was your crime, sir? That's just my wife. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Um, my crime. Well, look, I had a book out a few months ago, the psychology of secrets, mm. my adventures with murderers, cults, and influences. Mm. Not really to do with the culture wars, but a lot to do with authoritarianism and how regimes and cults, blah blah mm. blah. Um, I made it sound boring now with the blah blah blah, but it's good. Um, <laughs> it's a very good book. Go and buy it. <laughs> yes. And every there were, there were a whole bunch like the, the Tate Museum. There was a, a few festivals, bookshops who wanted me to come and speak. And then one of them, it was the Tate, cancelled because I uh, had controversial trans views. Wrong think. Wrong think. And from that all of them cancelled. I didn't get to speak at a one single place like that. Luckily, eventually, the Free Speech Union put on something for me. And funnily enough, the only festival that wanted me was a um, vegan campout festival in front of a bunch of woke people, which I really liked because it was a chance to say to them, like, hey, if you want other people to be vegan or whatever, don't shout and scream at them and hate them if they don't do what you do. Yes. Speak to them and, and have embrace ideas. And so it was this yeah. great... It was, And they were good. They were really open to it. So that mm. was nice. But... I wasn't allowed to do it. Um, there was an awkward. I'm, sorry, I'm very sorry to hear that. That's, oh, a, well, that's a that's a that's a real shame that tape tape fell and then everything else fell after that. That's a very very sad state of affairs. One bookshop. It was quite funny, really, but um, I was because I was supposed to go and sign a bunch of books, basically, and I spoke to the manager there, and she said, uh, "Yep, go and uh, uh, tell your audience." And I said, "But I don't want to tell them, and it doesn't happen." So you're 100. percent I don't want to put out a post. Hey guys, come meet me at this bookstore. Mm. And she said, "No, no, no, it's absolutely fine." So did that. Everyone's going, "Oh yeah, what day is it?" And all, you know, it was all there. But uh, and then the next day, I get an email from Pam McMillan saying, um, "We just spoke to that woman, and she says actually you can't have. You know, you need to be sort of just a, a, a behind closed doors kind of thing." And I was like, oh, "Okay, so I have to now go and tell everybody, don't go to the bookshop. Sorry, everyone, which is really bloody annoying." Mm. Uh, but I wondered what was going on. So I called. And when I called, it was someone else. And I said, is so-and-so here, the woman? And the person said, oh, they aren't here right now, but they will be back. And I realized they were they them. Oh. So they must have come across my stuff, oh. seen the trans stuff and gone, oh shit, why are we having this guy? But well, we was too late to cancel because they already had 200 copies of my book. So they had to have me there anyway. But they didn't want a bunch of turfs turning up at the yeah. the bookshop, which they wouldn't have been. They, my, I've met loads of my audience. They're lovely, nice, normal people, and the book is about secrets and things. It's nothing to do with that. Just, just for, for your sake, to establish your position on this, I presume that you don't want to oppress people who 
want to dress as women, want to dress as men, identify that way. If if I had a friend who came with me and they said, please call me her, you would, I presume? I think I would. 